Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angel and today I'm sharing some more beautiful home decor that is also useful. For this first project, I found this cute little coat rack at my thrift store for around $2 and I knew I wanted to make this over to have a shelf. So I picked up one of these thin wood boards from Dollar Tree and it fit perfectly over this except for I knew I wanted to cut those edges off of the coat rack. So I just grabbed my ruler and drew a line out and then I cut those off with my miter box saw. And then there I was just measuring to make it even on both sides before using some wood glue to attach that piece of wood to the top of my coat rack. And after the wood glue dried, I did add in some screws just to make this extra sturdy and make sure that shelf wouldn't come off. Then it was time to paint this, so I just used some of my brown paint that I've mixed up and I'm going over this entire thing as a base coat for this coat rack. Now I'm actually going to be covering up those little holes in the front of this to screw it to the wall. I am going to be adding new holes, but it just so happened that the holes were right where I wanted to use this pretty little floral frame mold that I actually got from Timu with some of my air dry clay. And I'm making two of these to add a little detail onto the coat rack. And you can see here when I'm gluing these to the front of that, just using some gel super glue, I had already drilled holes in the ends of this coat rack, but I actually do fill those in and change the position at the end of this because I wouldn't have been able to actually drill the screw into the wall because of the little pegs. Now I want to use this shelf as a little picture ledge, so I'm actually going to make a faux gallery railing with some of these little candle cup holders that I got from Hobby Lobby. Now you can use chess pieces or any little finial decorative little pieces for this, but I already had these little cups on hand, so I just figured I would use these to make that faux gallery railing railing. For the actual railing part, I'm just using these thin little dowels that I got from Dollar Tree. And here I'm just kind of seeing where I'm going to need to put those and if they'll fit well and still leave room on the shelf. But before I put this onto the shelf, I wanted to make this a gold brass color, kind of like the actual gallery railings that you see, the gold ones. So I painted everything black first and then I went over it with some of my European gold rub and buff to give it that bronzy brassy look. And while those are drying and my clay has now dried, I can go ahead and do the top coat for my coat rack and the shelf. I'm just going to do a very light chippy look on this, just using some school glue as a first layer. And then I let that dry for a few minutes before going over this with some of my white chalk paint. Now this had those little pegs on there and it was a little bit difficult to try to go in one direction with this, but I tried to make sure that my paint was all going one direction and any little areas that I really couldn't get into with my larger paintbrush, I just went back in with a small paintbrush after the paint had dried and already crackled and I filled in all those little spots that I wasn't able to get to and painted over the clay molds. Then once everything was dry, I can go ahead and do that faux gallery railing. I drilled little holes into my cups. The middle one actually has two holes so that I can connect the dowel rods in the center from the outside. Since they weren't long enough to go all the way across, I ended up using two of these and the holes are super tight for these dowel rods. So I just kind of wiggled them in there and they're definitely not coming out out 
anyway. So I didn't have to glue those, but I did add some wood glue to the bottom of these cups to attach it to the front of that shelf to make the gallery railing. And then once that wood glue was dry, I added in two very tiny screws to the two outside ones, but I wasn't able to get one in the middle. I did go back in with a little bit of white paint to cover those screws. And this is also when I filled in those holes that I drilled on the ends and changed those. Then it was ready to be hung in my bedroom. For this project, I found this really neat vintage wine crate at my thrift store for around $3. And this also came with a lid, but I'm not going to be using that for this because I want to use this in my bathroom. So I actually decided not to paint this crate and I actually really loved the wood tone that it is. So instead I am taking some of these parchment paper rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. These are pretty new in my store. I just recently got these not too long ago and I thought they were absolutely beautiful, but I will say these are a little bit more difficult to rub onto an item because the paper does move around. So what I found was taping this down really helped a lot and then really just holding onto that paper so that it is not wiggling around as you are doing this. But once I taped this down, I just used a craft stick to rub all over this transfer. And I will say that these seem to transfer a lot easier than the other Dollar Tree transfers and they leave a more faded look than a bold look which is perfect for what I was trying to do on this crate. But once I had the first one done, then I kind of just cut out pieces from the paper and placed them randomly on the front of this crate. And finally, I wanted to add some little handles. So I actually picked up these handles from my thrift store. And a little trick if you have handles like this that need two holes, just grab a piece of painter's tape and put it over the holes and then use a pencil or something sharp to poke holes where they need to be and then you can just place the painter's tape on your project and you'll be able to just easily make those holes to add your handles. So I just pre-drilled those holes and then screwed in my handles. Now for this next project, I accidentally deleted the beginning of this project. So here is the wood plaque that I'm using. It is from the Dollar Tree Plus section. And all I did to it was painted the under part brown and then I used some school glue and white paint over top of that to give it the chippy look. And then while that glue and the white top coat were drying, I just kind of scraped it in random areas. So that is all that I accidentally deleted. So here, once everything was dry, I'm taking these letter stamps from Amazon that I got and I wanted to make this into a kind of vintage grocery list. So I'm putting Main Street and then you also seen there I had some Dollar Tree transfers. So I'm just using a combination of my stamps and some of these Dollar Tree transfers. I did some little wispy lines there at the top and then on the bottom I'm using the transfers that say flour, coffee, and sugar and just rubbing those onto there and then I'm going back up top with my stamps and I'm adding 
adding grocery. Then I decided to go back to the bottom and add a few more of those little wispy line transfers. And I also added in little dots in between the flour, coffee, and sugar, just using one of my Sharpies. I also used a Sharpie to add a little line under Main Street, just to give it a little separation from the grocery part. For the actual part that's going to be the grocery list, I'm just using some Dollar Tree brown craft paper and I just marked it and cut it down to the size I needed. And for the dowel that I'm going to be using to hold this paper, I just got these from Amazon. I got a whole big pack of them and I just cut this one down to the size I needed, but you could definitely use a smaller dowel if that's what you have. At this point, my initial thought was to use these larger J hooks to hang my dowel from, but I do end up changing that in just a little bit. But I did put these in first, and then I just realized that I didn't really like it. It wasn't secure enough, and also I thought that the J hooks were a little too big. So, like I said, I do change that in just a little bit, but first I grabbed some of this metal Dollar Tree ribbon and I I have seen this recently at the store, so I know they do probably still have it. I'm going to use this as a little placeholder at the bottom so that my paper can't move around, but I wanted it to be gold. So first I painted over it with some black chalk paint, and then I used my gold rub and buff over top of it. Now you'll also notice that I did two pieces, but I actually only used one of them. I also decided to stain that wood dowel with a little bit of watered down brown paint and then I just wiped off the excess with a paper towel. And here is where I change out those little J hooks. I actually had these eye hooks that I got from Amazon. So I screwed one end to each end of that dowel rod and then I chose to use some smaller gold hooks. I just marked where those hooks needed to go and I added in the smaller gold hooks and then I can use those eye hooks on the dowel to hang this from. And finally, I just used some gold thumbtacks that I got from Dollar Tree to attach that little metal ribbon at the bottom. I just put one pin on each side of that. And then I did go back in with a little bit of my rub and buff to cover those pins so that they would match with that metal ribbon. For this final project, I have been wanting to make a tic-tac-toe board for a while and I ended up finding this cute little sign at my thrift store. It did have some wording on it, so I just kind of lightly sanded over that to start with. Then I'm just using a wet paintbrush and some of that brown paint that I have mixed up and I went over this with two coats. And I wasn't too concerned with the coverage where that writing was because this is just the base coat. Now I'm sure you all know my favorite way to get a crackle is by using school glue, but I wanted to try something different on this because I didn't really want crackle. I wanted more of chippy edges and just chippy little areas. So I thought I would try this method of rubbing a candle all over the areas that you want the chippy look. Now this is the first time I've done this and I have heard that you need to use a white candle, but I can tell you that's not true because I used a cream colored vanilla scented candle from Dollar Tree and it worked great. So as you can see, once I have my candle rubbed all over it where I wanted the chippiness, then I just painted over it with two coats of my white chalk paint. And once that was dry, I started scraping around the edges and any of the little areas where I had rubbed the candle. Now I couldn't find my paint scraper, so I actually ended up just using this little Cricut tool that I got from Dollar Tree and it worked just fine. The only thing that I 
will say about this technique is it was kind of hard to remember where I had put the candle wax because once you paint over it, there's really no way to tell where it is. So I just kind of scraped over the entire thing in hopes that I would just find the areas. Then it was time to actually turn this into a tic-tac-toe board. So I drew out this little template because I wanted my tic-tac-toe board to be the same length as it was in width. And since this is a rectangular sign that I used for the tic-tac-toe board, I just drew this template out. And then here I'm just going around those edges and marking where I need to put my lines. Now for this one, I decided to do a spring slash summer board slash tray. So I'm using these new little Dollar Tree stamps that I picked up and it had this little vine stamp and I decided to make my tic-tac-toe board lines from those. So it actually lined up to where I only needed to stamp it twice and then just kind of add a little edge to three sides of it. Now, like I said, I also wanted to make this into a little tray. So these are some more handles that I picked up from the thrift store. And I just attached these to both sides of the board. And then I went over them with my European Gold Rub and Buff because they were a little coppery color. So I wanted to change that to gold. Now for the actual tic-tac-toe pieces, I found these little wood blocks at my thrift store. I'm pretty sure they were like kids building blocks but I do have some linked below in my Amazon store that are almost the exact same size but you can use different pieces for this. I just had these and thought they would work perfectly. So again I'm just using that brown paint as a base coat for these and I'm just brushing it on with a wet paintbrush and then wiping off the excess with a paper towel. And for these pieces I wanted to kind of do a grayish barn wood look so I'm actually taking some watered down white paint brushing that over these and then wiping off the excess. Then once they were dry instead of doing the typical X's and O's I decided to to make these bees versus butterflies. So all of my bee stamps are from Dollar Tree and all of the butterfly ones are from Amazon. And then finally, I just added in a little stamp in the center of my tic-tac-toe board and I sealed all of these with three coats of my Aileen's acrylic sealer. And that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.